Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for joining me for some more MixCon 2021. And today we've got a masterclass coming up with a guy named Tatro. Tatro is big on the YouTubes these days. He's got over 130,000 followers and he has plenty of videos that have hit hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of views because people really like this guy, not only as a producer, but as an educator. He's amazing at really sharing ideas when it comes to music and audio production. And today his masterclass may be a little bit of a workshop because he's going to be showing off not only his process, but his process using a particular set of tools. In this case, the BandLab software. For those of you who don't know, BandLab is a browser-based DAW. Not only can you access it from your desktop, you can also access it and start working on music productions from your phone and go back and forth between your phone and your desktop or laptop computer right from a browser like Chrome. And this is a totally free application. And Tatro, for this presentation, uses nothing but the free plugins that are built into BandLab. So big thanks to BandLab for making this one free to the public. He's using just their DAW, just their tools, to really take you through his process of putting the final touches and the final revisions on a mix, this time in the context of a kind of lo-fi hip-hop, chill beats kind of flavor, and going about with a kind of process that's going to be really familiar to a lot of new and emerging emerging music producers and beat makers. He even does some cool stuff like making sampled instruments right off of his phone, just using the basic mic built into his phone to create a sampled instrument right into BandLab, right through the phone, and then having access to that new sampled instrument and those new field recordings at his laptop and desktop immediately just by hitting refresh on his browser. I think you'll also get a sense for just how important it is to really take notes when you're away from the mixing studio so that you can come back with fresh ears and bullet pointed set of ideas about what really needs to happen in your mix to take it from where it is now to where it should finally end up. And he really shepherds us through that final process of those last revisions to kind of sweeten this mix. We'll also be having a live Q&A with Tatro right after this presentation ends, so feel free to enter your questions right into the chat box there if you're here for the live premiere and catch that live Q&A with Tatro right after this is over. One more thing, we are giving away thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of free gear. Check out the MixCon mega giveaway over at sonicscoop.com slash mixcon giveaway. That's sonicscoop.com slash mixcon giveaway for your three chances to win thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of free gear. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. Tetro, take it away. What is going on, MixCon? My name is Tetro. Uh, welcome to this video. Today I'm working in partnership with BandLab to show off my process of music making uh, within the web-based and app-based DAW. So I have a track that I've basically, it's almost done, very, very close. I have some notes on it. I'm gonna take you through my process of working on the track and sort of explain to you some of the workflow uh, within BandLab itself. It's pretty cool. So here is, uh, the BandLab homepage loaded up uh, just in Google Chrome, by the way. Like I said, web-based DAW. I am going to go ahead and go to my library and open up the project that we'll be working on today called Street Wave. Now, when I go to the project, we can give it a quick listen. You guys can get a feeling for what the track is all about. I'm really into like lo-fi, hip-hop, chill beats, that kind of thing. So this is the vibe we're working with today. Kind of evolves over time. Again, this is not like a final mix or anything. I'm gonna work on some of the notes that I've taken for the track so far. And this is sort of just in this preview mode um, where we can just literally just listen to the track. So we're not actually working on it yet, obviously. Let me pause it. I think you guys kind of get a feel for the type of track we're working on today. Um, you can obviously publish tracks to your account, but you can also work on them, which is what we came to do today. So open up the mix editor and you can even see right here in the bottom that it immediately recognizes my audio interface as well as my MIDI keyboard, which I have attached. Um, and we can take a look at the project. So of course, I'm sure many of you, uh, this looks familiar, which is working on a timeline here. We've got all of our instruments stacked up on the left 
And you can see we've got a two minute or so uh, length track. Nice chill beat we've got here. Um, and this is the web-based version. So I not only worked on this track on my computer, but the beat of BandLab is I also worked on it on my phone. So if I show you real quick, let me unlock my phone. And I have the BandLab app open. And I can do basically the exact same thing. I can go to my projects, uh, this same one, Streetwave. And we can do the same thing where we can listen to it, but we can also open up the mix editor. And as you can see from here, same exact project loaded up on my phone. Same thing that's on my computer. So I will bounce between um, working on mobile uh, as well as working in the DAW. I think one of the interesting things is I always envied visual artists who could just carry around a sketchbook and a pencil and that could be super discreet and you don't need a lot of stuff. And, you know, a laptop isn't necessarily a lot of stuff either, but it is a different experience like opening a 13-inch laptop, smallest they come basically, uh, versus just pulling something out of your pocket like your phone and being able to work on a track. So really quick to just show you that, like uh, the sampler is one of the main instruments in my track. And if I actually open up the sampler, I can get right in there and play it. You won't be able to hear it too much. Um, but from right there, I'm able to start playing. And that goes for the instruments as well, because we get a full keyboard view for instruments too. So that was just the sampler, which I'll get more into in a moment. But if I go over to this, say, bass guitar, we obviously get piano. And we can also just get notes laid out like this if you're not uh, familiar with a piano keyboard. Let's exit out of that. So yeah, that is just to show that I've got the project both on mobile and on my um, web browser. And those are synced, by the way. So every time, back to the web browser here, if I make an edit, if I make a change, let's say make this loop shorter, for instance, as soon as I click save on here, um, if I reload the project on the BandLab app, it is boom, it's there and it's ready to go. So this is a really nice workflow for me. I sort of use the phone as my sketch pad and then when I start getting more into the nitty gritty, um, I start working into the web, the web based uh, platform. But then towards the end, which we'll talk about in a moment, actually the mobile version comes in really, really handy in terms of taking notes and keeping in mind what revisions I want to make. I'll talk about that in a moment. One of the first things, let me just jump over to a later part of the project, which we haven't listened to yet. So we've got quite a few layers playing here. One of them being this percussion track. Now, I love using field recordings in my music. Um, even if I wasn't using BandLab, I'm always using field recordings and sounds that I've collected from all around. And this particular track here, track one, is actually another sampler instrument that if I go here and go to source, we can see it right here. You notice each one of these little sounds here They've got a reverb on them. These are actually sounds that I just went outside and captured. And some of them are in use, some of them are not in use. Like we've got water droplets and stuff. Um, but each of these samples can be edited to be used in your kit. Let's actually lower the attack on that and get that drop. We've also got a tone knob here because of course when you're recording out in the field, just with an iPhone mic especially, you're getting a lot of rumble but that might not sound so bad in the mix so let's go ahead and just shorten that a little bit um, and of course we have our normal sampler options here we can just go one shot mode so i don't have to hold it down like in gate mode and you can build whole kits as you go so that is one of the main elements in this track these are just sounds that i went around um, sort of my neighborhood and captured of course, we're using more traditional drums in the track as well. 
but I find that the combination of those field recorded sounds um, in addition to a more traditional drum kit like this, which is kind of a stock uh, band lab kit, I find that the juxtaposition of those two gives you an, a much more organic uh, sort of original sound. So moving on with that, and, and I'll also note the process there, which I will also get into in a bit as well. If I go back to showing you my phone and in the band lab app, I could of course add another sampler. So it's just as easy as that. And then it's as simple as holding a pad, snapping or doing whatever you're gonna do. And suddenly you have a pad, uh, like a snap there, which I can go in and edit. Which by the way, I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna hit save. Revision is saved. So if I go to the project details, I can see that I literally just made that revision. Go ahead and open that up in the mix editor. It's also nice to be able to go back and look at all of your previous revisions. But now scrolling to the bottom, uh, we have this sampler track here, which just to show you the magic of that, that is the snap that we just recorded. Go ahead and pull back on the attack, get just that snap. Probably roll out a little bit of the lows. I could add some effects like reverb. And we would have ourselves a nice reverb -y snap here. Which, of course, I could use my MIDI controller to play. So that's very, very convenient. But you'll also notice that they are labeled with the letters of your keyboard. So I can just reach over and play that on the keyboard. So that is just to show a quick little process. That actually plays a big role in my process of getting sort of my own sound, collecting sounds, the ease of use, jumping from my phone and field, field recording to then opening it up um, on the web-based uh, platform. So the thing that I wanna get into here actually, is so we can actually work on this track, and I'll show you my phone one last time because um, what happens on the phone app for me or I don't know how any of your processes are, but for me, I always finish a track, uh, export it, and then I end up putting it on Google Drive or something, making it available offline, and then going to listen to it in a bunch of different situations, in the car, on different headphones, through different speakers. Well, what where BandLab sort of saves us that time um, is by, first of all, I can just listen to it if I want. I have the latest revision right there on my phone as soon as I leave the DAW and hit save. As soon as I leave the Google Chrome and hit save, I should say. Um, it's there, it's on my phone, automatically synced, great. But what I'm also doing when I'm trying to do like an edit or fix the mix and make it sound better, is I'm trying to take notes in each instance that I listen to it uh, to improve the track, improve the mix. So I'm just gonna jump back into the mix editor here on my phone, not to really edit the track at all, but just to go to that uh, little pen icon at the top. And you can see that I've made a few different notes here, um, which I can literally do live while I listen to it. So say I bring this into the car and I'm playing the track, I will go ahead and you know take notes. I have notes here for the intro all the way through the end of the track, which really um, facilitates my editing process, which can be quite laborious. You know, you work so hard on a track, you start to get to that finish line, but those finishing touches, improving the mix, adding those nice bells and whistles that take the track to the next level, um, they seem like small things, but they can be quite time consuming and mind consuming as well. So this helps with that. And some of these um, edits, I could literally apply directly on my phone too, but for the sake of today's stream, I'm gonna be doing them on uh, the computer. So I've got my notes here, I've got the track, and let's go ahead and dive in and improve this track a bit. So it's got a nice um, intro on that sample instrument. Let's hear that again. What I think would be effective here would be to get rid of some lows here at the beginning. So I'm gonna go to effects. And this current sampler has no effects on it. So what I will do is go to tone and 
let's actually add a quick EQ3. And I'm probably just gonna subtract, I might keep it mid-rangey, kind of give it that radio vibe, but I actually want to automate this. So if I go to my automation menu, I now get a drop-down menu with all of these parameters that I can automate. So let me kill the lows here by, you know, it works in a way that you'll be familiar with, where you can just put points here. I'm gonna go ahead and add these lows. Bring, we'll bring them down, not add them. Um, just like that. I'm not sure if I want it to be that extreme, so let's just give that a listen. Yeah, that doesn't sound half bad. Let me see what it sounds like if we roll off the highs as well to just do the mid-range thing that makes it sound like an old-timey radio or something. Bring that down, bring that down. I'll have that slight fade up there. All the way. I don't think it needs to be all the way. Should we give it a little bit of a... Yeah, I don't mind that at all, actually. Cool. All right, so that was a subtle change that makes the intro a little bit more dynamic, of course, because we're listening to that loop for four bars and then we're listening to it for uh, eight more bars with some drums, but anything to keep the listener more interested. That's the thing that I'm looking for when I'm making these types of revisions. I'm gonna click off of the automation view for now. Um, and actually the next edit note I have, again, I'm going right from the BandLab app, the notes that I literally took right on the track. It, it's interesting because I take notes on the app, but so many times I go from like, you know, mix editor, listen to the track, go take a note. But so many times I'm not used to having that convenience. So I swipe up and try to go to a notes app, but it's it's all in the BandLab app. So I know that sounds like a like I'm plugging it so hard, but it's literally just a matter of convenience. Back over here. So my next note is to float out the main sample with reverb and delay. So that's another thing we're doing with uh, this main sample track. And I guess the problem that I'm trying to solve is this transition here. We kind of just lose that sample. And of course we have our riser noise and stuff here. However, I want to add some reverb, delay, kind of really get it uh, washed out there towards the end. So we'll click on that track, we'll go back to the effects editor, and we can go ahead and add in some, let's add some delay first. Probably just de-delay is fine. And I'm going to want to automate, let's automate the wet level. Let's just draw, uh, of course, before this instance, we don't want anything to happen, so I'm just gonna draw that down. And I'll probably, just to keep myself safe here, draw it down over there so it doesn't come back in later and I don't forget. Let me go ahead and raise that up. Let's just hear what this sounds like for the moment. Might be a little bit too, a little bit too aggressive there, right from the jump. Interesting, okay. And I think I'll just add some reverb to that as well. Um, Space Maker is fine. We'll do the same thing we did before where we will uh, adjust the mix. Let's go ahead and find Space Maker, mix. And like before, I'm going to kill it over here so we don't have any unnecessary reverb and then kill it over there as well. Another slope and have this float out. All right, so with a couple adjustments to that automation, we are good to go on that note. The next note I have is at bar 21, I need to bring down the vocal synth. All right, so this vocal synth gets introduced at bar 13. And it may basically becomes the focal point of the mix. It's essentially, for all intents and purposes, it's the lead instrument. Let me freeze some of the tracks that I'm not working with at the moment. 
And the thing I try to pay attention to is what do I want the listener to pay attention to? What should be the main focus? And at bar 13, that vocal synth should indeed be the focus. Um, however, what I find is that at bar 21, it's more part of the window dressing of the track. It's it's less the thing that should be dead center, and it's more just kind of jamming along with everything else, but the volume has it poking out a little bit too high. Go back into automation, volume. And I'm just going to go ahead and stage that down here. Maybe just about too decibels and I'm good to have that throughout because that is the same um, good that settles in a bit more all right with that small adjustment our lead synth should be sticking out a bit less should be more just part of the atmosphere of the track. And the last note I really have is coming up during the end hook. But let me just listen back to this transition really quick because we introduced something new here. I notice I put in these breaks here. And they actually sound okay. I don't mind the like broken up. But it's actually a little much. So I might go ahead and just extend these MIDI notes because this is another sampler and it's in gate mode. So for as long as those MIDI notes are held, that's how long the sample will play. But when it cuts off, it hard cuts off. Cool, that's a lot cleaner, and I know I'm going to have to do that later as well. Um, so my notes here for the end hook is we introduce this lead, and I think that volume just needs to come down. Comes in hot. Going down about. Good. I might automate it because I want it to come in a little bit softer, but I want once we land there, it can get a little boost, just a little bit, not too much. And it can even get a little fade in here as well, just a tiny bit. There's actually already some automation happening here with the filter, so it's filtering in. The reverb mix is also automated at that moment as well. Good. Uh, the other thing I want to check, and this is something, oops, don't want to add that, double click, double click. Um, this is something that I noticed on listening on a different pair of headphones, which is why it's good to always listen on multiple pairs of headphones, including like consumer level. Like I think AirPods are great because what is your audience actually going to be listening uh, to your music on? Let me go to the MIDI editor here. I just need to, similar situation. Stretch out that MIDI now. Extended those notes there. That's gonna sound a bit better. There's a little bit of collision happening in some of the mid range. Like I don't think some of these samples have to be as weighty as they are because there's so much happening at once now. This is kind of what I like to do in my tracks. If you just notice, um, as we go through, we're kind of doing just different combinations of these loops and then introducing new material. And what I love to do at the end of a track is see if we can get all that material to come together in a way that doesn't sound too busy, um, but sometimes that is a challenge mix-wise for sure. And obviously the mid-range is where like everything is passing through, so we have to be the most careful. 
So if that is the case, I think this sample in particular, of course it's lo-fi music too, so I feel like it's like a bit cheating when it comes to mixing because I think part of lo-fi, you know, low fidelity, it's not necessarily necessarily supposed to sound amazing. It is supposed to have a low quality to it. Not low quality, but a low fidelity. Um, and if I just kill a little bit of the mids here at the end, I don't think it was a problem before this moment, but if I bring down the mids, um, it might solve us some headaches here just slightly. So let me do automation once again. Let's go ahead and just for this, actually it's gonna be for the rest of the tune anyway. So I might just bring that down about five. Seems about right. We don't need to bring it down over time. Uh, let's just listen back to that. It's gonna be subtle. Oh, we are soloed anyway. Feeling a little bit less clutter there, but I obviously don't need this to be carrying much low information either in this moment. So I might as a whole bring the lows down on this. Actually, let's not even automate it in that case. I might just pull back on the lows in general on this instrument because I've got a bass. I don't need this to be carrying too much of the lows. I feel that a bit better and I want to apply the same concept to um, this sampler as well. This one is especially heavy too. Luckily for this one, we already have an EQ on here that we can automate. So again, with the mids, my most dangerous place right now. I'm just going to do this at an extreme just to hear what this sounds like. Good. I'm going to do the same thing as the lows, same concept, right? I've got a baseline. I don't need this carrying too much low frequency. That's enough where it still plays its part. Might be a little too thin, so I'll give it a little more. And it is supposed to be kind of floaty and like a collision a bit, so I'm happy with that. Cool, and that just kind of ends abruptly, so I wanted to add maybe a a little something there at the end, just maybe a little bit of a reverb tail. So let's just go ahead um, and with the final sampler there, go to the space maker and just bring that mix up slightly over time here towards the end. Not Nothing drastic, but I think even that's a little bit too much. So let's have it start a little earlier and only go up to like 10 or 12. And then we can. So this is what I'm thinking about as I am getting into the process of finishing a track, right? Like it's one thing to get all the musical ideas out, but there's certain little things you can add. Uh, a lot of the times in automation, some of the times it's rhythmic. Like uh, I kind of already started this process when I was doing things like uh, the transitions or like this little moment where, you know, it's just the snare, everything else cuts out. Because sometimes in loop-based music, we get caught up in just placing our loops all next to each other. And how do we break from that? Well, we can do little breaks like that. We can make cool things happen with automation and just add a little bit more character to our track. So that's sort of an end stage for me. So I'm going to save this. And there's actually one final thing I want to do just to demonstrate um, using the sampler. I think it could use like a, a vocal shout at one point, like a woo or a... Hey, 
So what I'm gonna do here is go on my phone, um, refresh so I have that latest revision, and I'm gonna go into the mix editor of, of this track, and I'm just gonna quickly go into that fake um, sampler thing that we made before. I say fake because I just recorded a snap, and I'm just gonna record some vocal one shots. So this might be loud for a second. Give me a moment. Hey. Okay, so I have those. And for the sake of you being able to see it, what I'm gonna do is just save that uh, revision. And then we can go into the uh, project details to make sure, yes, okay, perfect. That's what we've got, mix editor. So now when I go to the bottom here, exit out of these. When I go to the bottom here, uh, we will be able to Hey! Here our sample, that's a bit loud. We can probably not have that attack rolled off. We can bring the volume down for sure. Of course, by the way, there's normalizing and mute groups as well. So if you want to have choke groups, you can do hey. that. Hey. 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 We can mess with the pitch. Hey. Let's actually try to bring this lower and... Hey. Hey. Woo. I think the woo actually might be a bit better. Might be uh, fit the tone Woo! of the track a bit more. I'm gonna again use that tone knob. Woo! And that's not to say we can't add effects because of course we can. I'm gonna bring this down in my mix. Woo! And up in pitch maybe? Woo! Like I want it to not sound like me. I don't know if anybody can relate to that. Um, FX, there's already reverb on it. Now what I wanna do is maybe add a little bit of distortion but not too much. Let's try the, uh, it's either the Puff Pie or the BL Driver. Let's just see what this even sounds like. All right, that's actually a nice, there's a nice quality to that, but I don't know if I want so much. Let's just dial it back a bit. And the other thing is too, the reverb is before, um, which let me try reversing that and hear how this sounds. I like the grittiness of that. I'm cool with that. Um, the place I want to put that is right before the last drop. Let me just record that in really quick. Um, I'll set my input to be my launch key. And the last thing I'll do is maybe make this mix a little higher, room size a little higher. And let's just record that really quick. Cool. Now we have that little woo happening there. I'm actually gonna switch it to a hall. I just want it to be like way bigger than that, than it is. All right, and the other thing we can do, like I kind of touched on this before, but let me actually get rid of that. And we can go in and just sort of, I'll keep the, I'll cut these instruments so that that gets its time to shine. That in the snare. So let's hear this. Let me just make sure that's quantized. That sounded a little sus. Of course, yes. We can quantize right there. Um, of course, there's like humanize and legato as well. So if I wanted to stretch out the notes, I could. I find humanize very, very helpful for drum programming because you could just quantize it and have it tight on the grid, but humanize helps it not sound so rigid. Last thing I'm just gonna add on the end of that chain there is a quick EQ and just kill any lows because I don't really need them in the vocal shout. Cool. Oh, I just X'd out of it immediately. There we go. All right, and that makes a nice satisfying ending there in my opinion. Very fun, very fun to make this mix here. I'm gonna hit save.
and I'm going to now export it because there's actually free mastering on BandLab as well. And I want to take a shot at that and see how it sounds. So of course we can download the tracks or we can download the mix down. All right, and we get some options here. I'm just going to go with the uh, full wave and go ahead and download. All right, now that that's downloaded, let me go out of here and let's go to mastering. Now we're uploading that same track. Now there's different mastering profiles, so I'm interested in probably trying out the tape one. But we can of course preview these. So I believe we're on universal right now. We're obviously adding a bit of volume there, but it's also of course, evening out the dynamics. Let's switch over to fire. You can hear that punch in the kick a bit more, which I actually really, really like. I'm not sure how that will gel with the rest of the track, but let's give a listen. Fire does not actually sound so bad. Oh, it's actually adding a lot of meat to the track. Great. I'm going to go switch over to Clarity real quick, which is more for like kind of pop singer songwriter stuff, I think. It has a Christmas to it, but tape. Honestly, I thought I was going to go with tape, however, I'm feeling more like fire is a bit more what I need. And it says punchy lows and mid-range clarity, and since there is so much going on in the mid-range with these samples, it makes a little bit of sense. Just listen through to this ending and see how fire does. Back to the original. Wow, that's crazy. Beyond just the dynamic change. Big difference. Okay, but I'm all in on fire. I'm satisfied with that. And then we hit download. You want to save to BandLab and share? Not right now. All right, so there you see my process working with BandLab and I can't stress enough how much the convenience of like, you know, me just doing sketches on my phone versus jumping to the computer and then going back and forth. Um, it does a lot, especially for somebody like me that likes to use a lot of field recordings, record found sounds, that sort of thing. Like those kits that I, you know, like for instance, when I did the vocal shouts, that becomes a sampler kit that's part of my profile that can be opened up in other projects. So it's sort of like this seamless sample library that you're building. Like it doesn't just live in the project you're working on. But I hope that uh, demonstration of sort of my process and what I do sort of at the end stage of a track uh, provided some value for you and some insight into you and your track making as well. Um, maybe you'll check out BandLab or maybe you can apply some of the things that we went through today to your music making process as well. Um, check out BandLab if you can. If you want to check out my socials, I'm T-A-E-T-R-O. My name is Tatro. I have a YouTube channel. Um, you can find me on YouTube, on Instagram, at Nick Tatro on Twitter. And I want to thank MixCon for having me. So I hope you all enjoyed this presentation. This has been Tatro with BandLab. Have a good one. All right, that was another great MixCon workshop, this time with Tatro. Got to check him out on his channel. Also, big thanks to BandLab for making this one totally free to the public. Check out their DAW. It is totally free to use. We'll run on your browser. We'll run on your smartphone. And there's a community of millions of users there. So definitely check them out over at BandLab.com. Remember, you can enter to win thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of free gear over at the MixCon giveaway. Check that out over at SonicScoop.com slash MixCon giveaway. That's 
sonicscoop.com slash mixcon giveaway for your chance to win. Thanks for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.